Hello, I'm Kit Watts from the IMEX Group and I'm here today with Steve O'Malley, the Division President for Maritz Travel. Thank you for joining us, Steve. Happy to be here. I'm excited because we're discussing festivalization. Sounds like a buzzword. What does it really mean? Well, I think it, it actually it really means that in today's crowded world, looking for everyone's attention, how do we turn our events, our business events, into something that's more meaningful, something that's fresher, something that, that basically builds a tribe? And I think that's what festivalization means to us. What was the last great festival you went to that maybe gave you some ideas for your team or, or the company? Well, I, gosh, that's a great question. I don't know that I've been to a festival in a long time. I'm, I think I'm getting boring and old. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, but what we've done is we've really taken elements of festivals and brought them into our business meetings, bringing in things like novelty, um, you know, even in a, how a room is set up uh, actually creates a better impact and creates a more lasting memory. Um, we've even done things like finding ways for people to identify outwardly the tribes that they're in, whether it's wearing their own team's mm -hmm. t-shirts or uh, their, their team's colors so that people can talk about rivalries as well as uh, friendships. Um, and, um, and really just finding ways to, to bring in all the elements and excitement of live events into our business events. And is this in particular a reaction to a younger demographic, a younger audience coming into the industry and us needing to evolve? Or is it, is it more than that really? Is it just a, a sort of more of a sea change in the way we need to express events full stop? Well, I, I think it's I think it, a little bit to do with the younger generation and how they take information in or how they want to build experiences. Um, but I also feel like, you know, the demographics don't tell all the story of, of your guests that are attending your meetings. Um, it really is about the personas. So, you know, some people have a desire to be right in the very front of the audience. Others want to lay back. Others want to uh, have information brought to them, you know, forcefully, even if, if it's very dense. Others need time to digest. So it's really a matter of identifying all the different personas. And I think taking the approach of festivalization, you can accommodate each of the different personas more so than just the demographics by building an event that gives people choice. It sounds as though this is also a lot about personalization. It really is. It really is. Yeah. So, you know, for some people for, you know, let's just say, you know, on the scale of introversion and extroversion, maybe doing a full on event experience or excuse me, a festivalization experience isn't going to appeal to the person that is more of an introvert. So how do we find ways where we can break off and have quiet spots for them? Um, because not everybody is, is uh, basically learns through all the hubbub of, of the crowd. So yeah, I think it is a lot about personalization and making sure that we understand what, what drives each person and also what, um, how they want to be communicated to. Festivalization also to me suggests uh, doing things outdoors a lot more. Is it part of that or is it more, as you say, the, these other elements about the, the mentality, the experience? So uh, some of it is outdoors. It's really a matter of trying to find ways to bring novelty f from your venue. So you can be in a ballroom anywhere around the world and you really don't know the difference if you only see four walls. So how do we bring elements that are either local in nature or just distinct so that it just stands out to people? So if clearly some things can be outdoors and in fact, uh, one of the elements that we're trying to weave into our, our business events um, is to make sure that people have meaningful breaks and the best breaks that you can take are away from devices and outdoors. And that actually allows people then to come back in and take in information in a more ready way. Regarding technology, how important is the, the technology piece as it fits with festivalization? That feels like it's sort of key, a key deliverable, if you like. Oh, I think it is. I think that's the expectation now with really every event, festival or not, is that if it's not available to you, the information that you want on your handheld device, it really is inapplicable. So. Um, yeah, clearly, I think, you know, when we're talking about putting these festivals together that are there to achieve certain business outcomes, um, that device readiness is going to be critical to uh, making sure that the guest has the, the interface that they need with the information they need when they need it. Let's think about uh, an event planner who's watching this and thinks, yeah, I want to do some of that. Where's the best place for them to start or are there some resources you can point them towards, a toolkit or such like? So I point them to um, MPI. Um, I think that there's a wealth of information around how to build more successful events within the MPI website, uh, both at your chapter level as well as uh, within uh, MPI Global. 
Um, the other part that I'd say is, is really take a look at who it is that you're trying to address. Um, you know, doing the same thing the same way for the same people um, is really not a very good uh, recipe for success. So what is it that's changed? Who's coming new? Who is it that you want to attract in a, in, to your event? Um, and, and really look at ways that you can do something distinct and do something different, even through what we believe are the eight phases of design, through you know, basically announcing, building excitement, um, how do you do things just differently and novelly in, in order to, uh, to bring the people into your event that you're looking for? I want to credit your team because a lot of IMAX in Frankfurt this year was inspired by the work we did with your team. I think it was three years ago now where you took us through that, that journey, the customer right. journey and the design experience. And it really helped us see our own event through the eyes of our attendees. And it completely changed our thoughts around what we used to call the softer items. Right. Uh, and we realized that those were important experiences that people wanted. So it was invaluable to us just to look through our, our event through this different lens with your help. It was, it's changed things a lot, as you'll see in the show. Yeah, and, that's, and it's wonderful to see, uh, you know, so IMAX as a corporation, you are such wonderful, warm and hospitable people. And now you're finding ways to express that in the show and on the show floor. And it's just fitting. I think, you know, I'm very familiar with the work that we have done with you. And I think that your organizing principle was family table. It's and right. I think that's just so perfect for, I mean, I love you guys so much. And, and mm -hmm. I just see that, that you are so hospitable and bringing people into the conversation around a family table just makes perfect sense. And I've seen the effect on, on the show floor already. Mm, that's great. The, 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 well, we love working with you, but as I say, I would, I would encourage anyone to go through um, that process if they can, that sort of objectivity, rather than getting too mired in the planning. Right. Um, I, I would describe it as sort of cherish the human experience, right. you know, as human. I think we're getting to know ourselves better as humans uh, and that sort of, that's, that's an exciting future ahead for us, hey? Yeah, and I think, you know, kind of that work, what it really centers on is what are the impressions that you're trying to leave with the guest? And you know, what is the residue on the brain that you want to leave for everybody that enters an IMAX or any of our business events? Um, and that's a, that's a pretty exciting frame when you think about it. I believe we work in a very noble industry. We get to change people's lives every single day. You know, there are gonna be people that are walking out of the show floor today that are maybe less familiar with the industry. In fact, I just ran into a very big cohort from Guadalajara, Mexico. And they are so thrilled. They're just over the top thrilled. They're saying, we have to be here next year. Um, so, you know, we do get to change people's lives and the impression that you're, you're building for those guests in particular is just very, very distinct and very important. How much is science and our understanding of neuroscience, the way our minds, our bodies, maybe our hearts and our spirits, how much is that changed and how much is, uh, is that a part of this festivalization package? Yeah, well, I think, you know, right now the science is catching up with what our intuition always told us. Um, you know, how you build in things like novelty, how you build in uh, things like uh, anticipation into the event, um, how you announce it, how you then, in, in the end, how you uh, keep the, the event going or the experience going through uh, follow-ups, like, and, and IMAX has done a really good job on that. Um, but it really is, how do we get people's attention? How do we snap them out of, essentially, the fog of data that is entering their minds every single day? And, and make them pay attention in a different way f through our events and then leave them with something valuable that, uh, that does help them as they go forward into their, into their daily lives, be it personal or professional. And, and I think that you know, it really is a matter of bringing the human sciences into how we are structuring our events in order to, to be able to do so. I always say to my team that we talk about people sometimes internally as a label, maybe they're an attendee or an right. exhibitor. But, but I'm always saying they are people like you. How do you behave? How would you react to this video, this email? Would you bother to watch it? Would you bother to read it? We, you know, one of our, our strapline is we are all connected. And I, I do say that a lot because I believe we are essentially very similar at the, at the yes, base of us. Certainly. And if you cherish that and really appreciate it, it makes decisions for you. I agree, I yeah. agree. And I think you know, for years, um, our company referred to the people that traveled on the programs that we put on as participants, mm. and it was short, called them PACs, mm. right? Like, like airlines do. About five years ago, we banned that language. Right. We call everyone guests yeah. that attend our meetings, events, and incentive programs. And when you think that you're, you're actually taking care of a guest, that language changes how you behave towards them. It, and you, know, you really literally feel like you're inviting them into something, an experience, 
that, um, that has the opportunity to do something really powerful. So at IMEX, we've been working to bring in um, live events agencies and, and festival planners more and more who aren't traditionally part of a market who come to a show like this. And, and we know they're different creatures. What's your experience of the way these folks think differently, behave differently? Well, I think they're willing to experiment. And, and that's a very important thing. Um, you know, events can get stale pretty easily. So how do we test new things out? And, and how do we have multiple venues? In fact, um, my sons were just at an electronic dance music festival over this past weekend, and they had 11 different stages wow. in order to be able to, you know, go and experience what it is that they wanted and be able to, you know, have choice. Um, I think that's an element that we can bring into our business events that we copy from festivalization. We just need to provide great choice. Um, one of the other elements that I think uh, festivals have right is they figured out timing, mm -hmm. right? You know, they know that people might not be at their, at their best at 8 a.m., right? And I think IMAX does a very good job, especially right here. Um, you know, starting, starting the, the event at 10 a.m., making sure that it's over a respectable hour at 6 p.m., in order to give people time to, to um, sort of re, re, um, get their energy back, if you will. So I think, uh, I think that there is interplay and crossover that we can, we can beg, borrow, and steal. And I think that even uh, festivals can probably take a little bit of the discipline that we bring uh, to business events and apply it to their events too. I see the festival organizers learning from us, <clears throat> excuse me, in particular around the sustainability piece. So our experience back in the UK and also in our home city of Brighton is you could run an amazing event, but then the outpouring of waste afterwards right. In our industry, that would be a part that we would manage with great intention and care. That's the bit they're just waking up to. So there, there are really strong mutual learnings for all of us. And I think the collective gain is massive. Rather than seeing each other as competition, we can, there could be a lot of crossover and obviously is at the moment, which is, is so vital. Right. And it's, hey, it's good for the planet. So why not, why not share best practices? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Of course. Thank you.